in this lecture uh, we are going to see that how steel and cast iron these are designated the objective is initially you will see the cast iron designation then plain carbon steel tool steels low and medium alloy steels and finally we will see how alloy steels are designated Initially, we will study uh, only those portion uh, where how according to the Indian standards this designation is done. Okay, so designation of cast iron uh, according to the Indian standard is done uh, by this way. Here you can see um, one example where it is written FG150. Okay. So initial these two characters FG indicates it's a grey cast iron. Okay. So you can see here what are the different types of symbols available for the cast irons. Few of them are here. FG which indicates grey cast iron. If it is WM indicates white hot malleable cast iron. If it is PM then that is paralytic malleable cast iron. If it is SG that is spheroidal graphite cast iron okay so initial two letters indicates the type of cast iron and finally this number 150 indicates the tensile strength in megapascal unit okay so fg 150 means it is gray cast iron with tensile strength 150 megapascal so the designation that you can see here is according to indian standard and this is designated based on the mechanical properties like tensile strength okay so similarly uh, if you see that a uh, material is designated like wm250 which means wm corresponds to white heart malleable cast iron so it is white heart malleable cast iron with minimum tensile strength that is 250 megapascal okay newton per square millimeter which means megapascal Similarly, SG150, which means it is again a gray cast, uh, again a cast iron category, and SG means spheroidal graphite cast iron. So it's a spheroidal graphite cast iron with minimum tensile strength 150 megapascal. Okay. Now, according to Indian standard, again, if we see uh, based on the mechanical properties, uh, some of these steels are identified in this way. For example, Fe350, okay, so Fe350 means it is a steel with minimum tensile strength 350 megapascal, okay, and tensile strength, by tensile strength, what do you mean? Tensile strength is basically the ultimate tensile strength, okay, and here you can see the symbols Fe indicates steel, E indicates yield strength, and K indicates keel steel, okay. So, Fe350 means steel with minimum tensile strength 350 megapascal. Fe E380 indicates steel with minimum yield strength 380 megapascal, where E indicates yield strength. So, in this case, this 350 was tensile strength, which is basically the ultimate tensile strength, but here it is yield strength of the material, okay, because E is present here. If you find that Fe 410K, this K indicates it is a keel steel. Okay, you already know that what is keel steel? In keel steel, basically aluminium, silicon powders are mixed so that uh, they absorbs all the oxygen present or the different gases present from the uh, metal, and that's why uh, no dissolved oxygens are present. So casting is generally very sound casting surface. There is no blow holes. Uh, found if you cast with a keel steel. So here uh, you can see that uh, this K, this symbol indicates it's a keel steel where 410 is basically the tensile strength, minimum tensile strength. Okay. Now designation not always are specified by their mechanical properties. Sometimes or many times it is specified according to chemical composition so now what 
ever we are learning here all are according to Indian standards okay so plain carbon steel uh, you can see one example here 40 C8 so this is a category of plain carbon steel which represents this 40 before this C this 40 indicates the carbon percentage but that percentage is actually 100 times multiplied so 40 means actually 0.4 percent carbon so 0.4 is the percentage of carbon present so when we designate it we multiplied this by 100 okay so if you multiply it by a factor 100 then 0.4 becomes 40 so 40 indicates basically 0.4 percent carbon okay and after this c you can see that it is the composition of manganese but it is 10 times multiplied when it is written it is 10 times multiplied so actually 0.8 percent manganese is there so for the manganese composition it is 10 times multiplied and for the uh, carbon percentage it is always 100 times multiplied so 40 c8 is a plain carbon steel where 0.4 percent carbon and 0.8 percent manganese okay so two things you have to remember here for the carbon percentage specification when it is designated it is 100 times multiplied for manganese it is 10 times multiplied okay now take this example so 45 c 10 s 18 okay so here you can see so before carbon what is there it is 100 times multiplied so carbon percentage is 0.45 after that it is always the manganese percentage but 10 times multiplied so actually manganese percentage is 1 percent and after that this if other annoying elements present you can see that s yes, that means the sulfur is present and here you can see that sulfur 18 means it is 100 times multiplied so s yes, 18 means it is 0.18 percent sulfur is present okay so in case of plain carbon steel we have carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, manganese, silicon as ingredients. These small quantities of these quantities may be present, you know, in case of plain carbon steel. Except manganese, all elements are considered 100%. That means, except manganese, manganese is only 10 times multiplied, but all other alloying components in plain carbon steel are multiplied by 100. Okay? So, let us consider another example where 90 T4, where 90 T4, this T indicates it is a tool steel, but it is again a low alloy tool steel maybe, where this 90 indicates the carbon percentage multiplied by 10, 100. So, carbon percentage is basically 0.9 and this 4 is the manganese percentage, 0.4 is the manganese percentage because manganese is not 10 times multiplied, but this T indicates it is a tool steel, okay. Now, designation of low alloy steels, the first number, remember, indicates the percentage of carbon that we have already seen. The first number, that is the percentage of carbon. And the second, fourth, sixth, second, fourth, sixth, this number indicates alloying elements. And third, fifth, seventh indicates multiplying factor divided by 100. Okay. So, you have to remember a uh, few things like if the alloying elements are chromium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, silicon or tungsten, in that case the multiplying factor is 4. If the alloying elements are aluminium, lead, copper, beryllium, vanadium, nobidium, titanium, molybdenum, then multiplying factor is 10. And if it is phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen, then the multiplying factor is 100. So, these few things you have to remember. And now see how can we designate low carbon, uh, low alloy states. So, here is one example. Here you can see 40 Cr 4 Mo 3. So, here what is the carbon percentage? For the low alloy steel, it is not a plain carbon steel. Because you see, have seen already that in plain carbon steel, always the C, that particular symbol was present, right? But here, it is a low alloy steel, where definitely carbon is present, 
and that carbon percentage is multiplied by 100 is this so carbon percentage is 0.4 then you see the chromium percentage the chromium percentage you get from this value but you have to remember if it is chromium then what is the multiplying factor so if we go out here you can see for the chromium what is the multiplying factor for the chromium the multiplying factor is 4 that means actual percentage multiplied by 4 is written here so what is the actual percentage it is 1 percent so here the chromium percentage is 1 now for the molybdenum it is written 3 and what is the multiplying factor for the molybdenum for the molybdenum multiplying factor is 10 so actually the molybdenum percentage is 0.3 percent okay so it's a low alloy steel with 0.4 percent carbon 1 percent chromium and 0.3 percent molybdenum now you see another example where it is written 35 manganese mn6 molybdenum 3 so 35 means carbon percentage is 0.35 for the manganese you have to see what is the multiplying factor see where is manganese here is manganese what the manganese multiplying factor is 4 so 6 divided by 4 that means 1.5 is the actual percentage of manganese and what is the molybdenum molybdenum multiplying factor is 10 so it is 0.3 percent molybdenum okay so in this way we designate low alloy steels now consider the high alloy steels in case of high alloy steels remember how we identify it's a high alloy steel if x this particular symbol is present if this x is present which indicates high alloy steels and if it is a high alloy tool steel then you will find xt is there indicates high alloy tool steel okay so from that we will get an idea whether it is a low alloy or high alloy if it is a high alloy then x has to be there multiplying factors not used in case of high alloy steel so to designate high alloy steels no multiplying factors are used so for alloying elements number gives percentage of elements directly so here you can see x which indicates high alloy steel then 15 cr 25 a 9 12 that means the first one indicates the carbon and carbon remember always 100 times multiplied so actual carbon percentage is what 0.15 now what is the percentage of chromium directly 25 percent what is the percentage of nickel 12 percent so for other alloying elements other than carbon no multiplying factor is used directly the actual percentage is given if it is a high alloy steel so that you I first have to identify from the symbol x okay now see another example where xt 75 ton w 18 chromium 4v1 it is written in this way so first xt indicates what it xt indicates it is a high alloy tool steel then 75 this is basically uh, 100 times the carbon percentage so carbon percentage is 0.79 now what is the percentage of tungsten present 18 percent what is the percentage of chromium present 4 percent vanadium present 1 percent so directly these are the percentage no multiplying factor used for higher alloy steels okay now some of the uh, examples uh, you can try now t70 so it is the tool steel having 0.7 percent value if you put 70 w what is the meaning of that it's a steel with the minimum tensile strength 470 and this w indicates having a very good weldability okay uh, sometimes uh, different kinds of other properties uh, different uh, manufacturing related properties or other properties are uh, written by this kind of a symbol now 45 c10 s18 so 45 c10 s18 is a low carbon steel okay so here you can see what is the carbon percentage of steel that is 0.45 and what is the percentage of manganese that is one percent and percentage of sulfur that is 0.8 percent okay xt that means higher alloy tool steel 60 carbon percentage is 0.6 tungsten 12 percent chromium 4 percent vanadium one percent okay now, till now what we have seen is that how in according to indian standards 
the steels and cast irons are specified. Now see the American Iron Steel Institution designation or AISI designation. In the AISI designation, uh, basically 35% uh, 0.35% uh, carbon, which is according to Indian standard, you know, 35C8 maybe 0.35 percentage of carbon according to Indian standard in American Iron Steel Institution designation it will be AISI 1035 okay so here you see the first digit 1 indicates the type of steel the second digit for predominant alloying element and third and fourth digit indicates the percentage of carbon in 100 okay so actually from the last two digits 35 it is basically 100 times the percentage of carbon so carbon percentage is 0.35 and from these two letters initially 1 and 0 you are getting this idea that it is a plain carbon steel and no other alloying element no predominant alloying element present okay that is like this zero. So here you can see uh, for 1 indicates the plain carbon steel, similarly 2 indicates nickel series, 3 indicates nickel chromium, 3 1 for manganese steel, 4 for chromium steel, 4 1 for chromium molybdenum steel, 5 1 or medium chromium steel, 6 1 for chromium vanadium series, 9 2 xx for silicon series in this way that there are different numbers. For example here you can see AISI. 5140 it means 51 is what you see 51 indicates the medium chromium steel okay so it's a medium chromium steel with 0.4 percentage of carbon now you see american iron and steel institute aisi together with society of automotive engineers SCE, have established four digit designation system which is almost similar to aisi where you see they are designated in this way SAE 1 triple X in this way maybe okay so the first number here indicates uh, if it is uh, 0 uh, the second number as uh, so a first number indicates it's a carbon steel 1 2 to 9 are used for other kinds of alloy steels second digit indicates what modification of the steel that means uh, that it is a plain carbon then it is 0 if non modified, if 1, it is resulfurized, if 2, then resulfurized and rephosphorized, 5 for non sulfurized, manganese over 1%. Okay, so last two digits indicate the carbon concentration multiplied by 100. So, just see this example, you will understand. So, what is this 40? It indicates the carbon percentage multiplied by 100. So, it is 0.4% carbon. What is this 0 indicates? It is a modification in the alloy. That means uh, there is no modification that is why it is a plain carbon steel and one indicates that it is a carbon steel okay and two and above indicates the alloy states so let us uh, see these examples SAE2515 so the first letter 2 indicates it is a nickel steel second letter 5 which indicates the major alloying element which is 5 percent nickel okay so it's a nickel steel then what is the uh, percentage of nickel percent that is the second and carbon content the last two digit 0.15 percent similarly sae 5120 where the five indicates the chromium steel and the second one indicates the major alloying element that means one percent chromium okay and the carbon content from the last two digit which is 0.2 percent okay i think you have got a very good idea regarding the designation system of steel and cast iron. Thank you.